Hello darlings and welcome back to my dream home the series where I am building one of my dream homes and we are starting obviously with the farmhouse. Last week it was the first of this series and we made a small start on the actual farmhouse itself including a little bit of landscaping around the front area and also we changed up the modern extension going into the back of the house. We're going to get going today with a bit more terrain manipulation and landscaping but that is exactly what we're going to be doing. I've also mapped out a new area. I really want to do like an English walled garden. So this enclosed walled garden where I can grow all of my fruit and veg and be self-sufficient in my house. That's what I would absolutely dream of doing one day. And we'll also get into the entrance of the house and we'll get going with a bit more landscaping and a bit more terrain manipulation in that part too. But let's get into game and I'll talk you through some ideas I want to implement into this build. And so here we are, my loves, back at my dream farmhouse. She's looking very nice, I must say so. I must say so. Uh, so, yeah, I've got a few ideas today, a few ideas on what I want to crack on with. So, I really want to do a walled garden. I just love the look of a walled garden. I'll pop up an inspiration picture here. I thought this side over here would work well for the walled garden area. I am going to be playing around with the terrain manipulation on this side. I want to go a little bit higher up on here. And I just want this to be a little bit more wild looking. The same with the front garden here as well. I'm going to be lifting this up with the terrain um, tool. And I just want that to look a little bit more wild as well. But I say wild. I would love a striped lawn. We're going to be getting a striped lawn in, that's for sure. But I just want it to look a little bit more fitting for this area. Get lots of trees and stuff. That's what's going to be going on today. Yes, it is. Uh, we're going to use this stone fence as well, which is the one from the cottage living pack. I just think that's a nice color kind of matching in. Semi-okay with the house. I think it's fine. Um, and that's it. That's what we're going to be doing today. I'm very excited, very, especially for this walled garden moment. So I think where I'm going to start off first is just by putting the wall around. Putting the wall around this actual garden area. And then what we can do is move on to some terrain manipulation because I think the terrain manipulation is, is going to pull this whole build together. It really, really will. Now, I've used this brick at the minute. It is the one from the organic kit from Harry and Felix, but that is subject to change. It might, I might go for a different color. We're going to see what happens. Now, I know I'm copying all of these doors on here. I don't want like more than I might get two doors. I might do like one around there and then have an entrance through here as well. I just think this ward garden area is going to come together a lot more once we actually get into it and get some details across. Uh, but what we're going to do now is get in some terrain work. So that is what I want to go ahead and do. Get those hills in the front here and at the back area over here as well. So that is exactly where we're going to start. And where we're going to make a start is at the front area here. So I want to lift this terrain up to match him with that foundation there. Yes, it does. Lovely. And I'm going to pull this all the way across to here. I'm going to put some hedges down here, I think. So I don't think I'm going to lift up the terrain around that area. I'm just going to leave it as it is for the minute. Now, what I want to do, I want a hedge going across here as well. So I, I'm just going to pop that in just for scaling and stuff. So I can work out where I'm going to be putting me the hills and whatnot. That might lift up on the air once I get to work on this, but we can sort it out afterwards. Fine. So what I'm going to do is pull you all around to here and I have a nice moment here. This would be a lovely area to have picnics and stuff on that kind of like vibe. So I definitely want to get a big tree on this area here. And I do want to go a little, not much higher, but I definitely want to bring it up. Maybe a couple more, maybe even three more. Let's have a look, see how high this would be around that area there. That's perfect. And then what I'm going to do Let's bring that all the way across, just in a band. This is very rough work for the minute. We'll get in and do some detailing in a sec. But if I could just bring you all the way across to there. Yeah, that's perfect. Oh, I do like that. Yes, indeed. And then what we're going to do is go down maybe just two, because then I want it to be a little bit different to the front of the air garden itself, just so it looks a little bit more organic, you know? And then... Smoothing is going to be our friend with this. We will get in and we will smooth the hell out of this just so it does look very natural. Uh, so that's what I'm going to go ahead and get on with now. Mm -hmm. 
And there we go. That's been smoothed in submission. There's just this nice, like, sloping hill by the side of the house, which I really like. We're definitely going to be wrapping a hedge around here as well, but I will put that in once we're going to get going with the tool mod. What I want to do first is bring up this area here now. So I'm going to... I think what we should probably do is get the grid on just so I can see because like, this is going to be an important kind of walkway around here. So I just want to be a little bit careful about where I'm putting this, you know? So if I could just bring you up to there to begin with, I'm going to wrap you around there and I'm going to go a little bit more dramatic with the hill here. So if I can bring you up three more just on this mid band around here and I'll contour it around like that. I think that's what I'm going to do. We'll concentrate on that area a little bit once we get into a little bit of detailing. So I want to go up even higher back here. Have a little bit of a contoured moment over here. It's going to look weird for now, I think, until we go through again and do some smoothing on this too. There we go. A lovely looking organic hill. I just think that'd be really nice to add some trees and stuff up there, some flowers. I want it to look wild, loves. Forget about this back here. That's absolutely fine. I can shove some hedges and stuff into that as well. And that's what we're going to do. Yes, we are indeed. You can obviously see I've pulled out some trees here as well. We're going to start plonking around the big boys, the weeping willows, the oaks, that kind of vibe. I think we need a big weeping willow in the front area here. I'm going to flop it to around about... Let me let me have a little look at you. Oh, yes, I think so. What a gorgeous tree. Always baffles me that this was never put in the build catalogue. That goes with a lot of the landscaping items. I just don't understand why they give it to us in game and don't put it in the actual game themselves. I know there's a process to it. I think these have got like higher polygons or something. So I have no idea. I'm not technical on that sort of like versing. But I wish we could just have them. The end. Thank you. This wonderful tree. Does this come in the catalogue? No, not even this big, beautiful oak tree doesn't come in the catalogue either. I mean, for goodness sake. I'm going to put it right in there. I'm going to put it right in between both of the fields that we've got going on here. And we are going to dot a few of these ones around as well. But I would love another big tree at the back here. And I don't know whether to do another weeping willow or another big oak tree. I think I want to do an oak tree and maybe like put it in that kind of like shape back there. Eh, I'm unsure. I'm unsure about putting this here just yet. I think I'm not going to do it. No, I'm going to get rid of that. We're going to work with these trees instead. They're a bit smaller, but they're still going to shield it with a little bit of privacy, you know. That's not the perfect spot for it. I will whiffle it into a good spot. There we go. Around about there, maybe. That could change. We'll see what happens. Let's put some more trees in here. In fact, I'm going to move you over to this side. Plop you in there like that. I'm going to do a couple at the back here, I think. Maybe like around there. And over here like this. I'm not going to put any in these fields. Because I want to keep these as free as possible. I mean, I could put a different tree in the middle there. We could go for like a smaller one. We we'll use this one here instead. It's just a little bit different. And again, it's just acting as a little bit more privacy for this Airbnb. Which is going to be a big draw for this Airbnb. There's nothing worse for me. I've, done, I've been to lots of Airbnbs in my life. And there's nothing worse to me when you don't have privacy from people who might own the Airbnb as well. Honestly, I went to one with my best friends last year. And the lady may as well just came on holiday with us. She kept checking on us like five times. Like, everything okay? I could have... Uh, yes, everything's fine. Me, mid-poo. <laughs> I was not mid-poo, but you get the idea. You get the idea. <laughs> yes, I think this could work. I don't know if... No, no, I don't know if I'm going to use that one. Actually, I'm going to use this smaller one here. Plop you up to there like that. Let me have a little look at this. I think that's a nice amount of trees on here. It kind of blends it into the surrounding areas as well, which I really like. Okay, so now what we're going to do is go around and dot these hedges all around where I want them to be. And 
there we go. All of the hedges are wrapped around the farm, enclosing it. And I do like it because I've also swapped around the way that the build was facing. It makes more sense to have it this way. This always to me seems to be like a driveway up to this farm lot itself. So it makes sense to have the driveway here, you know, where the car can actually come. And I know there's lavender and stuff in the way here, but I can't help that. That's, that's the lot itself. And I'm not moving that driveway because I think it's perfect. So I just think that's a little bit better. I do. So that's it. We've got the, the main landscaping in. The hedges, the trees. Obviously, I want to put flowers and stuff around and grass and things. But that will all come down once we go in and start breaking areas down and concentrating on little areas at a time. But today, what we're going to do is make a stop first on the terrain painting itself. So what I want to do here first is to extend this driveway a little bit over to the right. And for some reason, it's going a bit weird here. I think it's playing with the terrain manipulation on the other side. I almost have to come above it like this because it just doesn't like to go there for some reason. It like jumps across. No idea. Sims. What more could be said? So I'm going to extend this driveway up to here. Let's get this all looking rather perfect on this bit here. But let's get down to this level. There we go. That's a bit better. If I can bring you to there. I don't want to go there with the tree. I am going to though. <laughs> I'm going to do that. And I can always put earth underneath the tree area itself. And just cut in just a little bit more on this side here. I would like some kind of gate here as well. But I just don't think it's necessary with this lot. Considering we've got this here. So I'll probably just soften that area up instead. Um, but I think that's it for the driveway. I think that's kind of a nice size, actually. Wouldn't mind some kind of like stepping stoneage around through this way. I think that would look really nice, like having some stepping stones going up there. So I might do that as well. Uh, but I want to get under all of these hedges with a nice earthy tone. And you can see I've been doing that just by going directly above it and just doing small circular motions. I just think that's the best way of doing it under these like big hedges. It just it gives it a little bit more of a natural kind of vibe when you get to it. It really does. And what I always hate as well is drawing up to the edge of a lot with terrain paint because I hate seeing that clean line that you get sometimes if you like draw up to here. Imagine that white line wasn't here. This would look a little bit artificial, so I like to go underneath with the eraser and just get rid of that harsh line on points where you can just see it meeting it. The same over here as well. Look, I'll just, just softly just go to the edge and just get rid of that harsh line. And that really, really helps it look a little bit more natural than what it does, than what it does already. And then as you've seen before, I like to go to the edges with this sort of grassy tone and just blend them into the greenery around it. And there we go. Just a little bit of terrain painting. Again, I've just put down rough amounts of terrain paint. We're gonna go through and finely tune everything once we concentrate on smaller areas at a time. But we've kind of got this area mapped in now, which is what I really wanted, because now we can start breaking it down into each different areas and concentrating on them a little bit at a time. And that's what we're going to start with today. So we're going to concentrate on this front lawn area here. Uh, so as I said, I did want to get some stepping stones down. But I think what I want to do first is just drag up a little bit of this terrain paint and just bring it up this hill because I don't think the stepping stones are going to go onto this hill very well and I it would just it would look weird putting stepping stones up onto that bit so that's what I'm not going to do I'm just going to pull it up to there and then go around the edges and just soften them up quite nicely just to bring in a little bit of that grassy moment like that my love so you're going to hear my mouse clicking away and I think this is going to be the ticket it really will 
Yes, I do believe so. And then what I would love is just like a meandering, like stepping stone moment going all the way around here. That is what I would like to see. But lots of lovely like little plants and stuff in between it. Ah, that's what I want. So let me pull out some plants and some stepping stones. And nothing too dramatic with the plants. Just little bits like this I just want around the stepping stone area itself. Because this is going to be a very manicured lawn. We're going to do some lovely lawn lines going all the way through. I would love that vibe. I really would. So let's get these stepping stones in place, shall we? So I want them to connect in from this path area and just meander around in a semicircle around to here like that. stepping stone path and then what I'm going to do is bring around this landscaping that we've done at the front here I'm going to bring it over just onto this corner here can we get that soil please thank you just onto this edge here and I think that would just help bring around that landscaping from the front to this side area as well so we're going to use a few more of what we've already used so we're just going to flop a bit of this in like this just making sure that it's not creeping into the house at any point thank you some of this lovely lavender flop you around to the back like that um what else could we use here we could do some more hyacinths i mean hydrangeas sorry i reckon we could pop one or more onto the corner there let me see this as well yes we'll keep it in that kind of shape as well more of that lavender just on the edge here Beautiful. I'm going to size it down to just cluster them together a little bit. A few of those low level moments there. And I just want to add a little bit more of this grass in as well. So if I can get this around to a good. Yes, I think you could work there. And if I could do maybe one more just there, I'm going to have to sink these down with the tool mod. But I do think it's going to work. Yeah, just something like that. I think that just helps bring it around to this edge here a little bit more. I'm going to move the hydrangea a little bit more over to the corner though. There we go. Yes, that's the vibe. It really is. And then I wanted to use some of this and just, just dot it around where the, the stepping stones are. Just putting it, putting it in between gaps that I can get it to fit in anyway, without it going too much on the actual paving slabs themselves. I just think it would look lovely. I really, really do. I think it would look rather little, just cute little details like that I love lot more up on there like that and then let's put some more of this down here just just in little gaps as I said where I can fit them in because I would imagine it's quite kind of hard to mow around these if you, if you haven't got a strimmer <laughs> anyway <laughs> moving on and I'm just going to go around and just put in some of that detail just around these little stepping stones and this plant area all these little finer details that I love. I absolutely love. I'm watching um, lots of City Skylines 2 creators at the minute. There's one specific creator that I love watching. He's called Infrastructuralist. Um, and it's a Danish guy. And he just does all of this like fine detailing on like his, like his cities and stuff. And it's just, it's so lovely to watch. I love watching it. Yes. That's the ticket just there like that. Let's go off to the side a little bit more. Just so we can get a little bit more of an organic feel. There we go. You up there. And then I'm going to go onto this edge. And just put this all the way across like this. And then bleed it down slightly as well. Just in areas. There we go. Yes, I think that's the ticket. Oh, yes, it has a jade. But we do need to use that underneath of these trees as well. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to flonk in bits. Oh, that's a bit too much, actually. Let's just go to like there because I do want to get that lovely striped lawn moment in. Yes. And I think we're going to use some CC for this. So this is Charlie Pancake's Weeds. She's got some like CC terrain paints here. I mean, it's all terrain that is actually in the game as well, I think. Um, and they're just, they're great. They are really, really great. Again, stuff we should have in game and we don't for some weird reason. No idea why. And we're going to do some lovely striped lawns. So always best to work with a grid 
and I'm just going to turn the softness just down a little bit. And I'm going to go in between with this dark green, I think. And mix it up with this almost yellowish green. I might go over the top of this yellowish green just a little bit with another green. But I think these two will really work together to give us that manicured vibe. But you'll see what I'm doing now anyway. like that a very nice manicured striped lawn i would love to have that done one day i think they just changed the like length of the cutter blades to get that effect i'm sure that's how they do it i could be wrong but i'm just gonna say that's the correct way to do it i'm gonna put some of this sort of wild grass just underneath of each of the trees as well just to bring a little bit more you know life into this area because it does look very structured I just think adding this would just make it look a little bit more wild, which is what I want. Let's bring those down. A minus 0.2. I think that'll be perfect. Toggle that group. Let's have a little look at you. Yes. And then I thought this area here, I, I love roses. So I would want some kind of big red rose bush right up at my face. So I'm going to do a big rose bush here just to kind of, again... Uh, it kind of gives a bit of separation from the patio area to this like manicured lawn and I'm kind of vibing with that so that's what I'm gonna do I would love to have some peonies but I don't think we've got any kind of peony looking object in the game to be honest oh yeah I do like that I think that's a lovely placement Aiden well done and then I'm going to just soften up underneath of here as well just so again it doesn't look too perfect there we go Bit of there as well like that let's just get rid of that lawn a little bit more there oh i think that looks marvelous and i think the pièce de résistance i want a tree i want like a tree swing i want a rope swing in the tree now the only problem with this this is the perfect place for it right here but there's nothing holding it up so i'm gonna look i'm gonna i tried to look for like branches and stuff that i could hold on to these are up way too high i tried to size up the actual rope swing itself it looked very strange so i'm just going to put it here and hope that it just looks like it's up in the tree somewhere and we can't notice it you know imagine that i would i would love that I, I would be on that all the time if that was me yeah i think that would be a nice little area just to have a bit of thinking you know a bit of thinking swinging <laughs> but that's it for today i think i think this is where we're going to leave this part today i'm still going to add a few bits in here i think maybe some flowers and stuff under the trees but we'll do that next time and we're also going to be concentrating on next time the walled garden i think i'm thinking about making this a little bit bigger the walled garden and the greenhouse is the main part tomorrow that we're going to be concentrating on and also the patio area out here so all of this area here is what we're going to be doing tomorrow but i think we've i think we've made a nice start with that little garden area i'm very pleased of how it's turned out indeed i really really am but that's it thank you so much for watching my darlings leave me some lovely comments down below and i will see you all tomorrow in the next part goodbye